Hey fellow R Potters, Greg here. Welcome back to my channel. So one of the best mods I made this year, which was a game, cha game changer, was I added this outlet right here. The R-Pod Model 180 is notorious for not having outlets in the sleeping area. And so you'd have to either charge your phone way over on the other side of the R-Pod or run cables across the sleeping area when all you want to do is like check your phone in the middle of the night or, um, you know, the weather or something like that. A little reading light you can plug in. Also, my electric blanket is plugged in here, so it really minimized all the cable runs around the R-Pod. So, um, whether you're an R-Pod 180 owner or not, if you're looking to add an outlet, perhaps this video will be useful to you. So, with no further ado, let's get going. This is a before picture. We sleep with our heads on the starboard side of the R-Pod, so we're going to add an outlet on that side. Okay, I'm going to attempt to tap power off the nearest AC outlet to this location. Fortunately, in the R-Pod Model 180, the nearest outlet happens to be wired from the cargo area under the bed. So running a wire to the new outlet location should be pretty straightforward. Now first things first, shut off the main power to the RV. I intend to reuse the stock GFCI outlet, but the junction box where it's wired into is just too small and needs to be replaced with a standard size. The junction box is attached to the paneling here with a backer board, which I think is kind of flimsy. So my intention is to add some plywood behind the paneling so the junction boxes have something substantial to attach to. Alright, so first I detach the outlet by uncoupling the wires. Depending on your RV, you might need to just cut the wires. Fortunately, these wires released by unscrewing the terminals. Okay, if I was smart, I would have noticed which wire was connected to the line side of the GFCI outlet. But I was so excited to disconnect the outlet, I forgot to keep track. The line wire is the wire that is hot, meaning it carries power from the fuse box to this location. The other two wires branch off and carry power to other outlets in the RV, and these are called the load wires. Okay, there's a plan B, so don't worry. Now you see there are three sets of Romex wires leading to this box. You will be adding a fourth wire to supply power to your new outlet. This is why you need a standard size junction box. So what I did was I turned the main power back on, then used an electrical tester to see which wire was hot, and then I labeled it. This hot wire will be connected to the line side of the GFCI outlet. Okay, so you can just see the label hot right there. So now it's time to remove the wires and then get the paneling out. The paneling is stapled into place, so it's fairly easy to remove. Now, once the panel is removed, it's easy to work with the junction boxes. You're probably noticing that I have two junction boxes here. The second one is for my electrical hot water switch that I moved from outside the RV to the inside. I did this after I had to go out and turn on the hot water in a torrential rainstorm. Now, I simply flip the switch from inside the RV. I'll put a link to that video in case you're interested in that mod also. Now my intention here is to use the paneling as a template to cut a piece of plywood so that both junction boxes are firmly installed and supported.
Okay, for a GFCI outlet, remember that the line wire, the hot wire, is attached to the terminals labeled line. Black on brass, white on silver. So just remember, black on brass to save your ass. <laughs> and that's how you connect those wires. There are three other wires left that are load wires carrying electricity to outlets throughout the RV, including the new one you're adding. You'll need to pigtail the wires together because there are not enough terminals for three pairs on the back of the GFCI outlet. Now I'll let you go out to YouTube and learn more about pigtailing. It's really easy, but it takes up more room in the junction box, which is why you need to probably get a new one. Using pigtailing, connect the load wires to the load terminal on the GFCI. Same scenario, black on brass to save your ass. Finally, pigtail the ground wires and connect that wire to the ground terminal on the outlet. Hey, this black spacer mount was actually pretty helpful in giving me more space to work with. Having four wires coming into this junction box takes up a lot of room. Okay, to see if everything is wired correctly, I turned on the main breaker and then went around and tested all the outlets. Two orange lights means correct. Pressing the black button on the tester trips the GFCI, so I made sure that was working correctly also. I used my wire tester on the wire that will connect to the new outlet and made sure I saw 110 volts light up. Yep, this looks good. Okay, we're getting to the goal line. First, be sure to turn the main breaker off again so we can make the final connections. I picked up some plastic electrical conduit from the hardware store and fit it into place, making sure I was accounting for the height of the mattress. Once I had all of that marked out, I mounted a wired mold box to the wall painted the conduit, and ran the wire through before securing it all into place. Connect up your new outlet, remembering that black on brass bit. Note that I got an outlet that also contains two USB ports. Alrighty, time for the big test. I plug in my outlet tester and, ta-da, it works. I press the black GFCI test button and the GFCI outlet trips and shuts off all power to all downstream outlets. And those are connected to the load terminals, right? Right. Okay, last thing to do is to put the mattress back and then enjoy another pod mod success. Hey, if you found this video helpful, be sure to do a retired guy a favor and subscribe. I'll be producing more content and you'll be notified as soon as it's published and on my channel. Till next time, see you soon.